Of all the sources of water pollution affecting the health of Maryland's streams, rivers, and Chesapeake Bay, urban runoff is one of the most significant causes of waterway impairment. Controlling this runoff from new development has been a priority for all local governments and the state of Maryland for two decades. In fact, the Maryland Department of the Environment implemented one of the first statewide stormwater management programs in the early 1980s. This early program addressed the flooding associated with new development, producing the typical best management practices, or BMPs, we see today. Over time, though, we've learned a lot about what does and doesn't work regarding stormwater management and its impact on downstream resources. The idea of how you convey water and what you do with the water has changed substantially over my career. There was no mention or no thoughts of water quality at all. It was just uh, whatever happened once you conveyed it, it went and it got to wherever the receiving stream or body of water was and that was all you thought about. As things have evolved, the concept of water quality have come into play. It went from no recognition to uh, growth uh, and growies, I'll call them, that were placed in in ponds. A lot of you went from the dry pond condition to wet ponds and all of that was an evolution process and I think basically what's happened here in the state of Maryland is it's taken another step with these new regulations. This evolution has resulted in significant changes in the focus of Maryland's stormwater program including the use of BMPs designed to provide multiple environmental benefits. These benefits include pollutant removal, groundwater recharge, and stream channel protection. As a result, the face of stormwater management in Maryland has changed considerably over the last several years. To implement these changes, Maryland released a nationally recognized design manual in 2000 that addresses how stormwater should be managed in the state, particularly as it relates to new site development. The Maryland Stormwater Design Manual introduced for the first time a statewide requirement to address both the volume of runoff and the pollution it carries. This balanced approach of looking at both water quantity and quality means that things like groundwater recharge, water quality treatment, and stream channel protection are now required criteria for an approved plan. Stormwater controls can be divided into two broad categories, structural and non-structural measures. Structural measures are typically harder engineered practices like ponds and filters. The softer non-structural measures include grass buffers, tree save areas, and other environmentally sensitive designs. We'll look at both categories during this presentation. And in fact, we'll examine how we used to think about stormwater management, the new direction we're taking by using site design features and non-structural practices to solve flooding and pollution issues. And finally, a look at the ways to improve structural features that are incorporated in a site's design. Generally, more development in an area means more runoff, higher flow velocities, and increases in pollution. Because vegetation is removed and impervious areas like rooftops and parking lots are added, the result is that instead of rainwater being able to infiltrate the ground, it is forced to flow over the impervious surfaces where it generally picks up both velocity and pollutants. Pollutants like oils and sediment accumulate on impervious surfaces between rainstorms and when washed into local streams impact the aquatic life. In addition, receiving streams are eroded by high volumes and velocities, and flooding occurs when the natural drainage system is overloaded. Controlling this flooding was the primary goal of the state's first stormwater management program. For the most part, this program used engineered measures, dry ponds and other structures, to channel and store the runoff created by significant rain events. While very effective at flood control, these structures fell short of protecting streams from erosion and sediment deposition, and more importantly, the water quality. While flood control is still a concern, what we've learned over the past 20 years is that the key to effective stormwater management is to reduce imperviousness, 
control pollutants, and protect stream systems from excessive erosion. In the past, engineers designed highly efficient systems for dealing with rainfall runoff into the stream system. Rainfall landed on the rooftop, into the downspout, down the driveway, into the curb and gutter, to an inlet, to a storm drain system, and then into the stream channel. While very effective and very efficient, it was also not natural and caused many more problems than it solved. The new program tries to discourage this approach by recognizing softer techniques and promoting more natural pathways for rainfall to enter the stream system.